everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. Hi, guys. For those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, we take your questions that you submit to us via email to questions at itmtrading.com. Put them on, a, on the screen in front of us, and we ask them live so you get a real, true, spontaneous, organic response. Also, I want to let you guys know YouTube made a change. So if you're ever looking for these Q&As, there's a live section now on the Q and or on YouTube. So there's a recorded section and a live section. And since we do these live, they show up in the live section, which is, I was having a heart attack trying to find them the other day and I didn't know. Oh. Fortunately, Edgar knew. He was like, no, there's a live section and they're all in there. I well, thought, Edgar's Edgar, great. He knows I thought, all that I thought, stuff. I thought YouTube pulled down all of our dang Q and A's. Oh, wow. And they didn't. <clears throat> they just moved them <clears throat> to a whole nother section. Yeah, they like to do those. You know, I love it when everything is working well and then they change things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they didn't like notify me. They didn't notify How us. dare they? Bull hockey. All right, Denise C asks, say, let's say that okay. I buy gold and silver from ITM Trading. Okay. In the future, I need to use some of the metal to buy stuff with or barter with. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Do I scrape off some of the metal? Do I go somewhere to convert it into currency? Question. Uh, now, obviously, anything that we're going to answer here is speculation, right? We don't know exactly how it will pan out here in the United States when something happens, but we can make some guesses. Right. So, <laughs> number one, um, I would guess, it, you know, it depends on if you're going to barter. Let's just start with one part of the question at a time. So that's what this for me. That's what the silver part of the portfolio is. And that would be a direct, most likely a direct exchange. So you would exchange the silver for the goods and services. If, however, and this kind of covers everything else, um, if, however, you're not going to able to do a direct barter for some reason, let's say you got to pay your property taxes or something like that, you're not going to be able to do that with a direct barter. Then you would send it back to us. We would liquidate it into whatever the current fiat is, if it's dollars or CBDCs, whatever it is. And then you would use that to pay your property taxes or whatever you have to do that's going to require you to have the local uh, fiat currency. So it's actually pretty easy. Now, as far as scraping off some of the metal, I would say you would only do that if you were buying you know, you had like junk silver or something like that. <clears throat> and then you could snip a piece to the weight that you need. Right? Yeah. Or like if you had a, a goal, like a pure gold bar, I could see, you know, <laughs> if you needed to get to grams of it, because I know in Zimbabwe, they were working with grams of gold. Correct. So I could see like, you know, okay, maybe you'd have to do that. But that would be a last case <clears throat> resort. Like that would be something I wouldn't want to have to do if I didn't have to. Yeah. N no, I, I mean, I don't really see that. I mean, that that's the point of setting up a strategy, frankly, because you establish what your goals are and what you have to accomplish. And then it's the right tool for the job. So, I mean, personally, I don't own any gold bars. Do you own any gold bars? Mm -mm. Didn't think for so. barterable junk silver, I think is, junk silver, I think is the best. Or like, if I if I'm thinking bartering, in here in the United States, junk silver. Yeah. Because it's US silver, pre 65, well known. Yep. Right? 90%. Yep. Or I'm thinking uh, maybe silver eagles. Because it's also at least an American minted coin. Right. But, it, it, you know, when you're talking about the need to use them to buy stuff, you know, not just barterability, uh, but that's how you would do it. You would convert it as much as you needed to in the local currency. I mean, originally, um, my plan was on the other side of this when we knew we had a currency that had a component of gold because that's when they're going to be done with the overnight resets. Then I would convert a chunk. Um, I mean, I'm always going to have a foundation of gold in my portfolio, but I would have converted a chunk into the new currency once there was a component of gold in it. But since I see the direction of the CBDCs, <laughs> I'm going to get negative rates. So I'm more going to convert that as I need to. But however much I can do direct, that's what I'm going to do. 
But if, if there's anything I can't do with a uh, direct barter and I have to use the local currency, I'll convert as much as I need to into that local currency, pay whatever bill I need to with it and hold back because they're tired. I mean, definitely they want negative rates. If you read any of their documentation, because they've already inflated all the value out of the currency. That's, that's definitely where they're going. By taking even a short-term store of value out of the money and then redefining money, no, no, not okay with me. Shouldn't be okay with anybody, frankly, but definitely not. Okay, so <clears throat> how funny. <laughs> Glory asks, how does the negative rate thing work? Yes. You're just talking about negative rates. Exactly. Negative rates attack your principal. And you remember, we talked about that when they very first came out with the negative rates. Yeah, what was that, 29? 2009. Well, and then, but then, oh gosh, they breaking below the lower zero bound, the IMF report, that was 2016? 15. 15. October yes. of 15? Yes. Right. But and they, we talked about and they we talked about how they were gonna do it and then with the with the C B D C's now so it's way easier oh. than it was even because the breaking below the lower, the lower zero bound came out before there was this discussion about central banks doing digital currencies. Correct. And now with digital currencies it makes negative rates easy. so easy. Right. So this is how the negative thing rate works. You put your fiat money into a bank account that is charging negative rates. So what it does is you're paying the bank to hold those funds, whatever that rate is. And the central banks, once we go into a purely digital currency, then what they say, and these are their words, not mine, there are no limitations on how low we can push negative rates. So if they want you to go out and spend your money, then what they will do is they will push the rates low enough so that you could be sitting there looking at your bank account and watching the principal go down, knowing that you haven't actually spent a dime, right? What are you likely to do? You're likely to go out and spend that money on anything that might hold its value better. So negative rates attack your principal. They've already gotten all the purchasing power out of the currency officially. <clears throat> now they have to go to your principal. Now, lest you think that you can preserve your principal in cash outside of the banking system, no. The new bills will have chips in them that will track the negative rates so that whenever you go to redeposit that or to use that cash, it will ring up at whatever percentage that you would have gotten had you just left the money in the bank. So maybe you have a dollar, but when you go to spend it, it only spends 80 cents worth. So this is what I'm talking about them redefining. <clears throat> I mean, money is the original money and the way that it was sold to the population is it had four functions a medium of exchange, a tool of barter, a short-term store of value, so you'd always be fairly paid for your labor, and a long-term store of value, so that no matter when you use that money, you were always fairly paid for your labor. Gold is real money, and it requires labor and energy to pull it out of the ground and, and mint it and all of that. So when we were on a gold standard, you were basically trading your labor for someone else's labor. That's fair. But they all, and I can't tell you when they did that. I went back to see if I could find it uh, and, I, and I couldn't. So they've already removed the long-term store of value out. And of course, inflation by design and the fiat money removes your, the value over time and forces you to take risk in order to maintain the, the value um, you can't just hold the dollars. You know they're going to, everybody knows they're going to lose value now, right? But once they go into the CBDCs, they've, they've removed, I mean, this is in a recent document I read, right? Um, they removed 
even the short term store of value to make sure that you are fairly paid for your labor. Why? Because when you get paid, once we're in the CBDCs, you're not getting a paycheck. They're just depositing it into the account. But the account is most likely to be charging negative rates. So you're not going to be paid. You may think you're getting 10 bucks and maybe when it hits your account, it's nine ninety five. And if you leave it in the account, it's $9 and then eight and seven, et cetera. Okay. So that's how negative rates works. It attacks your principal. It is simply going to be a tool of measure and a tool of barter. And that's it. There are no functions of money. So you're working for something that's programmable that they can just boop, push a button and, and boom, all of a sudden 50% of it well, is the, gone the or funny whatever thing is, it is. <clears throat> the dollar already, as we know, is losing value, especially right now through the high rates of inflation. Right. Very, it's ra obvious. very rapid, right? And it's right. obvious it's, it's obvious. losing its value that a $20 bill, you know, at the beginning of the year is worth, buys less than it does today. Um, but with, with, with negative rates, yeah, like I was going to do an illustration for some people like uh, if, if they decided, hey, we're going to do a negative interest rate of 10% in your, on your money in your account, then over the course of a year, you would lose, if you had 100000 in there, you'd lose $10,000. So in that, principle. that forces mm -hmm. you, the point of that is to force you to spend. It's to create the inflation that, now I, they, they wouldn't put institute negative rates right now because they're raising rates. And so that they, it would just exacerbate inflation. But when the Fed does a pivot and they start to come down, they come down to zero and they're not creating the, the you know, inflation that they want to create, then negative rates is the only option. So then they start to go negative and they can go deeper and deeper, deeper negative if there's no cash, right? If there's no, if or they go cashless if there is cash, or, they, or it's programmable, and it's programmable dollars, right. uh, then they can just force you to spend because you won't hold that money. And then it creates, they're, they're driving towards that inflation that they want to they want to see. Yeah. And so what they're really talking about, I mean, right now when they put in policy, it, it takes roughly 18 months of going through the system to know whether or not they're getting what they want. Right. But once they are in full control of the CBDCs, they can, and they say this, this is not my words. This is, these are their words. They can tweak that policy constantly constantly. So nobody is ever really, and you're not going to know that that's why you got to have gold and silver outside of the system or you are just in deep doo-doo, right? Do you really trust these guys? Cause I don't. All right. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We're now recording. And, uh, so we're going to upload this stream after the fact found out that our internet was really, really poor and the connection was bad. So we apologize for the live stream getting interrupted. Back to our third question, JR Cash asks, anticipating hyperinflation and seeing the inevitable death of the dollar, why wouldn't the Fed or the US government print dollars and just buy out the entire supply of gold and silver so they'd be in a great position in the new system? <clears throat> well, I don't know that they're actually not doing that to tell you the truth. We what do know we China do know, is buying tons, right? Oh, and absolutely. so is Russia. So. Yes. And actually what we also know is through the third quarter of this year, central banks globally have bought more gold than ever in their history. So they are actually doing that. We should say something. Okay. Because it just occurred to me. What? Well, he said, and or the U.S. government. So the U.S. government... The Federal Reserve is a private bank. It is not a government agency at all, right? So it would make sense for the Fed to be buying, at which they would not disclose that to anybody. Yeah. Um, that's that's their private bank. They're allowed to do what they want to do. They would they could be buying, but the U.S. government would not be doing that because the Federal Reserve sort of trumps the Treasury when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Probably. So, yeah. so the, I mean, you know, I'm sure you guys knew about all the, the Fort Knox stuff and is it really there? And nobody really knows, but it could be the fact, I mean, it right. could be the fact that the United States government has no gold. It, right? could, it could well be. But 
Could they print money and buy gold? Absolutely. That would be the smart thing to do. And, and are <laughs> they doing that? We're not going to know. Right. If you think that they tell us everything that they're doing, think again. So I, I wouldn't say that they're not doing it. We know globally they are. Central banks are absolutely doing it. Right, but central do banks, not governments. Correct. But do we know for sure exactly how much gold China's buying? No, and they're not going to share that with us. So, yeah, it very well could be that they're doing it, JR. They hide all their domestic production, too. China does. Yes, they do. They and they do not any let any it. gold go out of the country. Right. So you better declare it on your way in or you're not taking that, it home with that you. That might be a government that actually does buy gold for themselves. I don't know. Um, well, do they have an independent central bank? Do we have it? Is there any... I mean, I know they're all private corporations, but seriously, do you think any central bank is actually really independent? And remember, there was just a recent report from the IMF talking about, well, what do we really need them to be independent for? Because they're not really independent. So I think they're setting up to justify making that like official, but also invisible because people don't really understand the central bank but they don't want you to think that anything has changed, even when everything has changed. Right. Um, Sportsman 99 asks, is it wise to move precious metals out of the IRA, pay the penalty while spot is low, then own the coins when the spot goes up? That seems like a tax-related question. If I'm think, well, trying to think through what he's really getting at, it seems like he's asking, he or she is asking, uh, a tax-related question, like, should I get it out now while spot is low and then keep the coins when while spot goes up? Then I'll, then I'll have them when the spot goes up. Well, and I would say that that makes a whole lot of sense to me, right? Because right now we know that spot is being artificially suppressed. So, and also, you know, everything... Well, hold, you hold, hold, hold. Because we should make a disclaimer for... We should say... That it doesn't matter if they're in your IRA, unless it's a Roth IRA, then you're not, you're not going to pay tax on it, regardless when you liquidate it. But if it's in a traditional IRA, and they can you, change the you're going to you're going to pay the tax no matter what. Right. If they're in your private possession and you liquidate, liquidate them out, you're still supposed to pay the tax on those coins, regardless of if they are in your possession or they're in the IRA. Yes. Right. Because all good <clears> citizens <throat> always pay all taxes that are due. Right. So. Having you, said that, you, you, if, no matter what you're doing, though, um, as far as tax planning is concerned, so if that's where that question is going, uh, to me, it makes a whole lot of sense to go ahead, and it's, it's a choice that I actually did make, so I can speak to that, to, you know, pay the penalties, get it out, pay your taxes, do what you got to do, and then hold it in your physical possession. Of course, the only thing you can do inside of an IRA is also uh, bullion. Right. So you, what you're pointing to, though, is it's not a tax-related thing. What you're saying is I do it to get it into your possession so you can have it near you, right? Yes. But also, when do you want to pay the tax? I mean, I, I already had in a meeting with my accountant to figure out, you well, know, even if he pays tax the tax planning. now, even if he pays the tax now, if there's a gain between when he right, that pays he's... the tax. So if he if he has to pay the tax at the 1600. Right. Uh, which I would much rather do that and get them in my control than leave it in there, let it go to fundamental value and then try and get it out. And and you know the other part of that is I I, I don't know because I can't guarantee this. <laughs> But I don't feel particularly comfortable leaving my wealth, including my gold, vulnerable to confiscation. I 100% agree with you, if not. I, I'm also not comfortable having my gold in a, an IRA. Right. I much prefer it to be in my physical possession. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think about that from a tax perspective. Um, so let's wipe away let's wipe away the tax question and let's just look at it from what you said is yes <clears throat> pay the penalty get the coins get it out get it into your possession so it's in your possession right regardless of what the spot price is right have them with you 
Uh, yeah, because unless, if, unless if you're you like 59. It, and you, you want to wait six months? You wait six months so that you don't pay the 10%. <clears throat> That's what I do. M maybe. But if you're like 45, like me, then yeah. you might want to pull them out. It, it, you know, it, maybe. We are going into 2023, after all. We are, after and all. did I not say that 2022 was going to be a pivotal year? Yeah. Has it proven to be a pivotal it's year? It's been a wild, crazy, <laughs> nut job year, yes. Right. I have a feeling that between now and June, it's going to get even crazier. Well, we're definitely going to start seeing global recessions kicking in. Well, like, and, and it's going to be known that all these economies are now in a recession. Well, do you know <coughs> that, uh, the, that the global yield curve just inverted, and that's the first time it's done it in decades? Just what happened inverted. the last time it inverted? Well, that oh, the global recession. Mm -hmm. Global recession. Well, that's not really a big surprise for anybody. No. But there could be people out there that are going, well, the yield curve has been inverted for a while now because it started, what, back, I think I first started reporting on the 20-year, uh, 30-year bond inversion in, I think it was January. I mean, I could be off on dates on that, but it was like, you know, it was mm -hmm. in January. So some people go, oh, well, it's been inverted. Oh, look, we haven't, have we not hit a recession? Not that they're declaring because they get to say when it is and when it isn't. So I suppose it depends on who you are, whether or not you're experiencing a recession or not. But yeah, I mean, I think it's a big deal that it inverted here, but I also think it's a very big deal that it inverted on a global basis. And we're getting lots of warnings. Yeah. We're getting lots and lots of warnings. All right. So Robert D. asks, Lynette, how can we force the price of gold to show its true value so that central banks can't buy it on the cheap? Oh, we, we don't have the ability to force that. What you do is you take advantage of that, just like the central banks are doing it. It's going to be the central banks and the governments that do that overnight revaluation. That's when you're going to see it begin to express to its fundamental value. Uh, likely not before that. I mean, his, historically not before that because a rise in gold price is an indication of a failing currency. Do they want you to know that the currency is failing? Absolutely not. Yeah. Well, and like it is showing more of its, it's breaking away. The premiums are getting higher. On You're the physical seeing to the spot. the physical to spot yes. break, break away from that and holding long term. Like we've seen these premiums hold for a long time, way up uh, higher than the normal amount. So we're already seeing that demand, you know, outstrip supply, creating premium, rising premiums and, and breaking away from the spot price to a certain degree. So, you know, it's already kind of showing that to us. Right. That's a um, good point. <clears throat> so, but, but it's not expressing it as true fundamental value because we know that that's being held down. So, right. Right. And, and I, I got news for you. Central banks, they create the money. We don't create the money. So we're not going to force the central banks, but you do vote with your purse. I mean, that, that I think is a big, huge key. So I put, I vote, my vote is for gold and silver. So when you vote with your purse, do you just take it and hit people with I it? might. There's sometimes I really want to. Yeah, like central bankers. <laughs> bang, bang. Oh my God. Oh, get me in a room with Put some Jay gold Powell. in there and pop out. You, you, know who I'd, <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'd really like to sit down and have a conversation Ooh. with? Ben Bernanke. Yeah. I would love to talk to him about the Roaring Twenties because he's supposed to be such a master at it. And I've read his work on it and eh, I, I really disagree with so much of what he says. He's just talking out of one side of his mouth. He doesn't understand it the way, he doesn't understand it the way I understand it. All right, well, that's oh, it for today. That is it for today, but make sure that you watch tomorrow's video on real estate because it's important for you to see what's coming up, right? This is all part of the strategy. And also, if you have not yet done so, you want to make sure that you start your gold and silver strategy. So just click that Calendly link below, set up a time to talk to one of our consultants have your goals ready because that's what any strategy needs to be based on. And frankly, if you don't know how to establish the goals, we'll help you do that. We'll just ask you some strategic questions so that what you do actually supports 
what you want, right? Puts your best interest first. You know, what a novel concept. But uh, beyond that, make sure if you haven't already, you want to definitely be subscribed these days because things are happening so quickly and you're going to hear about it and hopefully understand that that's the goal um, from this channel. Leave a comment, give us a thumbs up and share, share, share. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.